was another Christmas Eve, and all across the railway, the engines worked hard on the year's busiest day. Stops were made, and packages were delivered, warmed by their fires, not a steam engine shivered. From Ellsbridge to Knapford, Tidmouth to Craven's Gate, the trains ran quickly, they couldn't be late. It was early evening when little engine Oliver ran his last passengers, but he'd have more to deliver. Waiting on the platform, looking sad and forlorn, stood a lady named Susan, her heart obviously torn. Oliver wondered why she'd be sad on this night, for Christmas Eve usually brought delight. Excuse me, ma'am, Oliver said. Is something wrong? Susan looked over at him. My husband Richard, he's a sailor on a cargo ship, the NV John Watson. He's been at sea for the last few weeks, but he promised he'd be home for Christmas. But he wasn't on your train, and it's the last passenger service. Now Oliver understood. I'm sorry, Oliver replied. It's not your fault, Oliver. She glanced down for a second, then looked hopefully at Oliver. I, I don't suppose there are any more trains that I don't know about. I'm afraid there's only my mail run, Oliver replied apologetically. Susan nodded sadly and turned away. As Oliver watched her walk away, he couldn't help feeling a little bit sad. Obviously, having her husband home for Christmas meant a lot to her. It had stopped snowing when Oliver reached the docks, but he was still thinking about Susan. What's wrong, Oliver? Thomas asked, catching the little western engine's expression. Oliver told the other two about Susan's plight. I wish there was something I could do to help, Oliver finished. Maybe you can, Oliver, Percy replied. That ship over there came in about half an hour ago, and one of the sailors on it looked a little bit upset that he'd missed the last train along the Little Western. Oliver glanced over at the ship in question. The MV John Watson, he read off the bow. That's it. Did you see where the sailors went? I think the upset one went into the pub across the road from the harbour master's office, Thomas replied. Oliver glanced over hopefully. He might still be there, Oliver said. I'll go take a look, replied his driver. As Thomas and Percy departed, Oliver's driver climbed down and headed over to the pub. Oliver's driver soon returned, with a sailor. Oliver, this is Richard. Your driver said you'd spoken to Susan, Richard said. Yes, she seemed to be missing you, Oliver replied. Unfortunately, we hit some bad weather, crossing the channel from Germany. It put us back by a few hours. Well, you're here now. I can give you a lift to Callan in my brake van. Thank you, Richard replied with a grin. I'd really appreciate that. Richard quickly climbed into the brake van, and Oliver set off. As he approached the forest, Oliver heard a whistle ring out. Two short blasts followed by a long one, the railway's standard warning signal. He braked quickly and came to a stop just short of where James was stuck in a snowdrift. 
The red engine was looking quite annoyed. I've been stuck here for ten minutes already, James said. My guard's gone down the line to send for a snowplow. Oliver's face fell. This was the last thing he needed. He was already running late. Richard leant out of the brake van, having overheard the conversation. Would we be able to get some salt? He asked. Salt? Oliver asked, slightly puzzled. Yes, we can use it to melt the snow, Richard replied. I've got some salt wagons in my train, James said. We could probably use their load. Oliver's driver and fireman, along with Richard, climbed over the snowdrift and joined James's crew. Using the coal shovels from both engines and some buckets from James's brake van, they quickly heaped salt onto the snow. Before long, all of the snow had melted away. You should probably get a move on, James said as the engines began moving. You'll be late for the Christmas party. Oliver knew James was right, and he quickly accelerated. He soon reached Tidmouth Holt without any further incident. As the mail was being loaded, Richard climbed down and spoke to the station master. He then turned to Oliver. I've asked the station master to call Susan as I want to make this a surprise. Would I be able to ride in your cab for the last part of the trip? Oliver grinned. Of course, he replied. Richard climbed up into Oliver's cab, and they set off on the final part of the journey. They reached Callan's station without any further delay and Oliver spotted Susan waiting on the platform. You wanted me to meet you here? Susan asked as Oliver stopped next to the platform. Yes, I've got a special delivery for you, Oliver replied with a smile. Over here, Susan, Richard called. Susan turned and a grin crossed her face as her husband joined her. She turned back to Oliver. Oh, thank you, Oliver. You've made my Christmas. I'm glad I could help. Oliver replied. With that, he left his train at the platform and quickly headed off to the turntable. He needed to get to Knapford for the Christmas party. All of the other engines were waiting when Oliver arrived at the Knapford sheds. Where have you been? Duck demanded. Sir Topham's been waiting to make a special announcement. Oliver glanced over at the fat controller, who wasn't looking happy. I'm sorry I'm late, sir, Oliver said. He quickly explained about Richard and the snowdrift that had delayed him. By the time he'd finished, the fat controller was smiling warmly. That's quite understandable, Oliver, he said. The fat controller then turned and addressed all of the engines. Well, engines, it's been another eventful year. There was the rescue of Emma Chesterton and that terrible storm that struck in the spring. During both of those events, you all acted selflessly and honourably, qualities which are further demonstrated by Gordon's rescue of Alice and Oliver going the extra distance to make somebody's Christmas just now. I am proud of you, Engines. All of you. Knowing this assures me that the railway's future is in good buffers, so to speak. You sound as though you're leaving, sir, Thomas said. I am leaving, Thomas. I'll be turning 70 next year. It wasn't an easy decision for me to make, but it's time for me to retire. Silence fell over the shed for a few moments as the fat controller's words sunk in. But sir, what about the railway? Douglas asked, voicing the question on all the engines' minds. The fat controller smiled reassuringly. I'm sure you all know my shunt, Stephen Topham Hat. The board of directors had no hesitation in electing him to be my successor. He was supposed to be here tonight, but I'm afraid he's been snowed in at Harwick. As of the 1st of January next year, 1984, he will be your new, ahem, fat controller. The engines gasped. They hadn't known that he knew about their friendly nickname for him. The fat controller chuckled. I'll still be around, engines. I have bought a small cottage near Kelsthorpe, 
for my retirement. He paused for a moment, and Edward, next to the podium, thought he saw a slight tear in the fat controller's eye. I'm sure Stephen will have as much reason to be as proud of you as I am, Engines. You're a good crew, each and every one of you. I'll be making sure to visit from time to time. This cheered the engines up slightly, but as the Christmas party continued into the night, they couldn't help wondering what the new year would bring.